all right so this is a quick tutorial on how to get a really slick way to get uh, Turner VPN working on Ubuntu um, the reason why I decided to do this is because I noticed that in the newer versions of Ubuntu um, the libraries for 32-bit Java 32-bit is more of a pain um, because they're changing the packages that's required that are stalled for the 32-bit version but yet the VPN is very picky on um, the 32-bit stuff it requires for it to work so um, took a pass at this and um, after much much trial and error we finally got this thing working uh, without depending on the browser to work so you notice here I have a Ubuntu 13 and a Ubuntu 14 uh, version so I want some files from the Ubuntu 13 since I got it to work on Ubuntu 13 uh, once you get these files you won't need Ubuntu 13 anymore and if for some reason you can't get your files to work let me know I'll just get a copy of mine but since I successfully got it to work via the browser on Ubuntu 13 I found what the files were and I copied them to 14 and then went from there so let's do that first so I'm gonna start up my 13 here Alright, so first thing I want to point out in 13, let's just go to the little, we got files here. Alright, so when you're hitting director, if you hit control H, you can see all, all your files in um, your Windows Explorer, for the lack of a better word, they call the Finder file files program. Um, but the one that really, really matters, there's a folder here called uh, .Jupyter Networks. And this has everything you need um, to, to run from the command line. Um, the most important file is the file. There's a file in here called uh, Network Connect, and it's called NCJAR. This is the this is the GUI and all the plumbing for um, Network Connect to work. Um, all the stuff around just support it. Um, and then there's a whitelist file here. That really doesn't matter. It just has um, the servers that's okay to use. I like to use this one, but either one will work. But I like I like the eWork um, TWD one. So let's get these files off. So all I did was um, because of permissions, I tried. You know, you could just go to a terminal here, and um, of course, I'm sitting on my stand man. So I'll just create one called um, like tar. Um, CVF network Jupiter, you know, um, coolness tar, and then I want to get everything from Jupiter networks and go. And you know, I always notice there's one called permission denied, you can't get the file, so let's do this again. Because I really do want every file, so I just put a to do on it. And now you see, it, you don't have any problems. It, it is able to create and get all the files. So now, if you go over here, you'll see one called coolness, and of course, it has a little lock on it because it's now a root file. So I just swap the I'll swap the permissions on it. And now you see the lock's gone off. So now it's a file that I, it's my file. And this is the same file I just created one for just demo purposes. But this is the same one right here. Let me see this Jupyter files. It actually looks like I got a, my directory's too high. Let's do this again. Um, you see it's nested too deep. So I want to get rid of this nest here. So I'll just um, do it again. Uh, 
there. Coolness dot Jupiter like that. And that should do it. What? What? Yeah. That. There we go. So now the path is perfect. We. You don't want no dot four slash. You want your. The, you want literally want just the roots to be dot Jupiter. And I'll just change the name and the rights again. All right, so that's all you need from from 13. So I'm gonna shut this down now. Go to 14. I'm gonna use this file. This is just for example purposes. So I'm gonna, um, if you're looking here, this is the same. It's funny. It looks like I did the same thing on this one, <sighs> but it, it doesn't matter. Like I just said it, it's really just uh, it'll extract. This will extract to the root of your home. But anyway, um, let's go to 14. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to my my 14.4 tab and power this one up. All right, so now we're in our 14.4. I restored my VM to an earlier version so you can see all the steps. Um, but if you look in here. You know there is no folder for the the Jupiter, so I'm gonna leave this open. And I'll open up another one, and then um, if we go to, I have particular right now. I have a share, a VMware share, that I can access through my Windows and my just so I can get the files, and I'm gonna copy this file here, but. Let's take a look at. I took some notes here. Let's take a look at. Um, I made some notes. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to install these. This library right here. These libraries. You get the same result if. Like if I open. Um, no, that's not what I want. Yeah. This is what you used to run. You used to run this library here called um, AI Libs. And let me show you what it does when you do that. They've apparently removed this particular package off. So if you try it, you're going to get this. So it's been removed. It's no longer available. It's removed. And they replaced it with these three. So that's, that's where I got. Um, we got my document here. That's where I got um, this from, this line right here from. So literally, I just I'm just gonna run it. So this this replaces and this gets your gets you the 32 bit dependencies you need on your machine. All right, so now I have that on. Got to have that. And then once you have that, you just need to have a 32-bit um, Java installed as well. So this is where I run this line where it installs, you know, the open the J JDK. But it's important you put the I3 to 6 on the end because you want the 32-bit um, Java installed. And then there's a web browser plugin for Java called Ice T. That's for Open JDK. Uh, Oracle Oracle Java have, has their own web plugin, but um, this is the one called Ice T plugin that works for Open JDK. Now this this is what I normally used to run on my Ubuntu 13, but for some reason on 14 I can't get this I can't get this to work. Um, and now that I know this new way, I probably won't worry about it anymore. But let's go ahead and just install it so you can see what it does. All right, now that we're all done, um, it's important to learn this command. It's called uh, update alternatives config Java. And what this does is it lets you see all the versions of Java you have, and you can on the fly switch out uh, which version of Java you want to use. Now, 
you have this priority one which is set um, you have one that's selected and you have the other two, uh, any of the other ones you have installed and as you see I have the 64 bit and, and now I have the i386 installed um, the um, open JDK uh, AMD 64 bits by default but I wanted both so now that's why I have this but now I need to switch it now because right now the one with the star shows you the one that's actually um, being used uh, so I'm going to pick number 2 and now if you run like Java version you notice that you know my ice is installed um, shows my version and I'm good to go so once you get that working um, technically you should be good to go you can go to eWork and um, all as well so let's uh, go back here H and you see that there is no dot Jupyter networks there's my file but there is no folder ready to go so let's see what the browser will do all right so I'm gonna log in real quick So this is the fun part, you know, you hit um, start, you hit allow, remember, it's using my ice T web, you know, I told it everything's good, definitely run my, I trust it, run it, yes, everything's good, allow, always, and then it says, hey, are you sure you got it installed? I do. I, I think I do. And then you get this. This is the farthest I get. I always hit this stupid setup failed, blah, blah, blah. Check your alternatives. This sucks. So like now what do you do, right? So then it goes back here. Well, don't worry. We now have a solution to get around that. Um, and it's not a pain in the ass like this one is. So let's close the browser. All right, so now let's have the, the, the real fun here. Um, you see, the one thing I want you to notice immediately that it did create a folder called .Jupyter Networks. And I'm thinking something gets hung up when it tries to download and install everything and get everything going. So you have this you know, Network Connect Linux app. And it, like I said, create this whitelist and says, hey, this is the one you can use. Um, so we'll just leave that open. Um, but the files are real incomplete. So let me just extract my version in there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It created a number two here. So let's just delete this one. And keep mine since I know it's. So this is the one that's from Ubuntu 13. And you see it has all the files. All right. But. In addition to that, there's a file that you need called Jupyter NC SH. I um when I zipped up my file, I included it, so you're not gonna you're not going you're not gonna see Jupyter NC SH, but I will give you this file. This is the one that I found online and it's totally awesome. Like really, it's really, really awesome. And I will send you this file. Alright? But let's run it so you can see why this file is a big deal. You see right now I'm currently in my home directory, so I'm gonna go into the Jupyter directory. And in there, you see we have the file. So let me just run it. Uh, SH, Jupyter, SH. All right, so when you run it, it's gonna say the initial setup needs administrative purposes and your password. So never run sudo on this file, it's not necessary. And then once you see this network, uh, enter the network connection, is looking for ework dash twd dot turner dot com. That's what it, that's what you need, or or the ATL. But you need. But once you put this in, hit OK. Um, users, your NT user for Turner, and then user. See what says realm. It's very important. You do not touch this. It's important. Very very important that users is the value. Just exactly like you see it uppercase U, lowercase s is for the realm. And now you're done. 
now the important part's over and all you gotta do now is do your usual you know put your put your numbers in all right if all goes well you'll get your little your thing and it's connecting everything's good see I'm working I'm on e work connected all is well in life everything is good so now you have your little your little GUI that shows your network connect your app running Java app and you sound connected like you see I can ping stuff at work like you know scheduling dev everything works it's totally cool and the other part I want to show that's really really awesome is that now I could um, I can go back to like alternatives and do config Java and let's say that I have the Oracle Java 64-bit um, installed I can switch like right like for right now I have the 64-bit installed I can say the open open JDK I can say go back to number one and you notice I'm now the 64-bit server running but my network connect still works it didn't crash or anything so it still knows where to sit now that you had a reference to this 32 bit, this can still function. But now you can run your 64 bit Java for the rest of your session. And if you have like WebStorm who uses Java, you know, any app that uses Java, you can swap to your 64 bit and all is still well with this. Now let's test something. Let me disconnect this one, my connect session. And it immediately says, hey, do you want to restart? I'm saying no. And right now you notice I'm still on the 64 bit server. But let me say, let me run. Let's go back and run. Let's run it again. It's gonna complain. See, it immediately says, "Hell no, you you can't run. You can't have a 64-bit Java running a 32-bit app." So just hit OK. It tries to find it and does all kind of crap. But if you want to get back, switch it back. You just go back to your Java. Find your 32 bit, and that's it. Run it again, and you notice this time it only asks you. It only asks you for your pin code. You don't have to worry about any of the other settings again. Now you're hot. It is truly good stuff. All right, so that's all I figured out over the weekend. Um, let me know if you have any problems. Uh, we can try to figure it out. So anyway, here's a quick rundown of the of the steps one more time. Step one: install your 32-bit stuff. Step two: install your 64-bit of your Java. Um, you can entertain yourself and try to put your web plugins um, as well. It might work, might not. You can test with Firefox if you want. Didn't work for me, so don't worry about it. Um, extract your files you got from uh, your early, your working version of Ubuntu. Uh, extract them into your home of your your current version of Ubuntu, um, and just run it. Run the script. Your prompts URLs is, is asking for the eWork um, TWD or ATL. I tested the TWD. I'm sure they tell work as well. Users make sure it's for the realm, and then you, whatever your your in your user for Turner is, and your passcode at that moment. All right, talk to you later.